good early morning FFers. If you've been wondering why I record these in the wee hours so frequently, it's because I have this problem called brain flashes. Uh, when I was younger, I couldn't sleep very well because my brain would not shut off. And I just willed myself to stop dreaming, which helped a little bit. But every now and again, one of them wakes me up and I call it a brain flash because it's usually something I can't, if I don't get up and record it, when I wake up the next day, I, I will have forgotten it. So I've learned my lesson as a creative person. When they happen, get them recorded. Several years ago, I woke up with a brain flash that turned into a fully formed story about the 9-11 tragedy. And I woke up and I wrote it all out very quickly. It was all fully formed in my head. So I have learned as an artist, when the brain flashes wake me up, get up and get it recorded. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I had this brain flash about the shun monster. And it, you know, it's in line with what we've been talking about, but it was mainly um, spurred by the uh, all versus oil discussion we had. And I got to thinking about that in regard to our accents and our accent work when we're trying to work on an accent that we don't have naturally, but the character needs to have it. You know, where do we draw the line in terms of our um, understandability in the, in the finished production? Typically, you want to default to the standard American accent, the one that's, you know, the newscaster voice or whatever, the, the kind of non-accent. But if the character calls for you to lean into your natural accent, then you might want to do that. Uh, so if you're specifically going to be recording a commercial for the southern states and there's a reason for the character to have a really thick southern drawl, then yeah, go for it. But I still think that we need to keep in mind our understandability. And so the shun monster came to, to life in my brain. Because when you think about all the things we need to concern ourselves with while using our instrument, our voice, they all end in shun, enunciation, pronunciation, diction, elocution, articulation, inflection, intonation, shun, shun, shun. So I want to talk about the shun monster. And the thing that, one of the bits of my brain flash was this sentence that kept playing over and over in my brain. So at first I typed it, just so you could see me typing out what was playing in my brain. And this just popped into my head. I'm telling you, I'm weird. You better hurry. You're gonna wanna get a lot of butter. <laughs> that just kept playing over and over in my head. You better hurry. You're gonna wanna get a lot of butter. So then I thought, how would speech to text interpret that? Would it type it that way, the way I just did? Or would it know better because of our accents? So let's see what happens when I use speech to text to type for me. You better hurry. You're going to want to get a lot of butter. Wow. Look at that. Now, how did it know? So then I decided, okay, let's see if I enunciate. Will it still type the same exact thing? You better hurry. You're going to want to get a lot of butter. Bingo, it did. So then I, I just did it again just to double check my work. You better hurry. You're going to want to get a lot of butter. You better hurry. You're going to want to get a lot of butter. <laughs> check that out. 
same exact sentence no matter how I said it. You better hurry. You, you're going to want to get a lot of butter. <laughs> you better hurry. You're going to want to get a lot of butter. The only word in there that's an actual correct English word is hurry. Everything else is us la doing lazy speak. Ya instead of you. Better instead of better. Your instead of your. Gonna instead of going to. Wanna instead of want to. Get a instead of get a. Lotta instead of lot of. Butter. <laughs> So these are the kinds of things that we do normally in our speech, no matter what kind of accent we may or may not have, no matter where we come from in the country, we lays out and we, we say things that are not fully enunciated, not fully articulated. So let's talk about the shuns a little bit. I, uh, I did a quick Google search. So you'll see here, uh, I just typed in enunciation versus diction just to get started. And of course, Google came up with all kinds of shuns. So let's just briefly talk about these words and what they mean to us. Enunciation and diction are similar. Enunciation is the clarity of speech. So how well we say the words, ya versus you. If we enunciate ya, it would be you, not ya. If we enunciate ta, it would be tu, not ta. If, we, if we're going to say going to, that would be correct enunciation rather than gonna. Uh, they often say that the secondary meaning of diction is synonymous with enunciation. So there is a fine tuned difference between enunciation and diction, but they're very similar. But then there's other words that come into play, such as inflection, intonation, um, diction, articulation. So let's see what some of these mean. The difference between enunciation and pronunciation is that enunciation is the act of saying a word clearly and concisely, while pronunciation is the act of saying a word correctly. So you might say a word correctly, but not say it clearly and concisely, like if you mumbled it. So, th so there's a fine-tuned difference between those two things. The bottom line is, we're as performers, and you know, I learned this many, many years ago as a radio person, as a DJ, as a, a live event host. In order to be understood by our audience, by our viewing audience, our listening audience, we often have to perform in a way that is not realistic. You know, as I always tell you guys, we're not presenting reality when we perform, we're presenting hyper reality. And the difference between the two is that in hyper-reality, we have a lot of other considerations to take into account that we don't have in normal everyday reality, such as how do we look in the frame? How do we sound to the, to the listener? We don't necessarily worry about those things too much when we're just out and about during our normal everyday life because we're not constrained to a frame. We're out in the real world, and people are looking at us in the context of you know the open spaces that we occupy. We're not being recorded most of the time. So we're not that worried about our diction, our elocution, our pronunciation, our inflections, our intonations. We're just worried about talking and spitting out what we want to say. And often we do so without thinking a lot about it, sort of offhanded conversation. And we might be joking around. We may not be, we might be preoccupied because we're always doing more than one thing, right? So our speech may not be as clear and concise as we would want it to be in a normal everyday situation. But do we want to present that on screen to our viewing audience? No, because if we did, they wouldn't understand the story. And our first responsibility is to tell the story. That's why we get hired, right? To bring our take on the story to life and to convey that story to the viewer. So it's important that we are understood, even if we have an accent, even if we have to do a character voice, like a cartoon voice or a science fiction monster voice or a you know, um, horror movie voice, whatever it is, we need to be understood. 
and I mentioned this in my comments, but I'm sure you can all think of a, of a character or a movie or a show where the voice of the character was so distorted and so inarticulate that you couldn't understand what they were saying, you know, whether it was a monster voice that you couldn't understand or um, an, a thick accent that was just taken too far or, um, you know, somebody trying to portray a regional accent. This happens a lot with actors trying to do the Boston accent, you know, they'll, they'll take it too far. And then you're like, what the heck did he just say? Uh, even or, or another really good example is the Jamaican accent. Uh, there was an actor in the Luke Cage Netflix series, one of the evil villains that Luke Cage was battling, who had a thick Jamaican accent. And I couldn't understand a lot of what he was saying. So, yeah, it was cool that the character was was using this, you know, authentic regional dialect. But it hurt the story because then I couldn't understand the storyline. I was wondering, I was spending too much time trying to figure out what the guy was saying rather than just getting the story, you know? So the shun monster is yet another monster we need to cope with. And when it comes time to doing a commercial, especially, I think it's even more critical than it is for a film role. Commercials are, are, are a tool that the advertiser wants to use to sell their product or their service. So they're less concerned about entertainment value. They're more concerned with salesmanship. And I think that articulation, enunciation, pronunciation are much more important in a commercial read than they are for a film or theater performance where it's more creative and it's more storytelling. So I think that even if you're going to affect an accent, whether it's your own natural accent or a different regional accent, you still have to pay attention to the words that might not come across clearly in that accent and adjust them so that they can be understood, such as all. When most people pronounce it oil, I would suggest leaning towards that. And I gave you many good examples. When we're on the air, we don't say our, we say our. So people know what we're talking about because our is a different word than our. So I don't say our guys just got a touchdown. I say our guys just got a touchdown. I don't say gonna, I say going to. I don't say wanna, I say want to. So you might have to work a little harder to speak that way as the character and still sound naturalistic and not like, you know, bookwormy or too studious or too, it's a fine line you have to tread between how far do I go to, you know, realistic speech versus speech that can be understood. So you may have to, you may have to find a, a comfortable middle ground between those two. Maybe sometimes you get to say gonna instead of going to. It might work. A lot of the lazyisms that we use in the English language have become so well known, so ubiquitous, that we can probably get away with quite a few of them in a film production, in a theater production even. But if it's a commercial shoot, my strong opinion is that we should lean towards correct pronunciations, careful enunciation, careful diction. So having said that, let's discuss the standard American English accent or the general American English accent. Let's, let's find out a little bit about what that is exactly. So what's known as the standard American accent is commonly called general American English or possibly more frequently standard American English. General American English, according to Wikipedia, is the umbrella accent of American English spoken by a majority of Americans and widely perceived among Americans as lacking any distinctly regional, ethnic, or socioeconomic, socioeconomic characteristics. In reality, it encompasses a continuum of accents rather than a single unified accent. Americans with high education or from North Midland, Western New England, and Western regions are more likely to be perceived as having general American accents, like the, the Northeast accent, I call it. Because even amongst Northeastern uh, dialectal speakers, you have obvious accents, you know, Boston, New York, New Jersey. So there's plenty of uh, pronounced accents in the Northeast. But, but overall, it's one of the more uh, 
there are many people in the Northeast speaking this general, I think of myself as one of them. Uh, growing up in Connecticut, even when I went to California, they, they used to ask me, you know, where are you from? They would get confused. They weren't sure because I didn't have a, a specific accent from anywhere. Let's give a listen to these examples they have here. There are some parts that I quibbled with because I didn't understand at the time that it's in the editing that a film is shaped. So I noticed that Stephen had shot almost everything I had demanded, you know, that had to be there. But a lot of it did. How interesting and, and ironic is it that she's talking about film? <laughs> this is a, a black woman from Georgia, Alice Walker. It got cut. And that wasn't uh, very good to see. But the story is strong. It's a very robust story, and it's very universal. So that no matter how they cut it, it's always true. And that is what I really love about the color purple. The color purple, there you go. Now you can hear some lazyisms or uh, regional affect in there, but but as a Southern woman from Georgia, her speech is very standard American English compared to many Southern accents that we hear. But she does say things like very instead of very. And uh, at the end here, she said. So that no matter how they cut. No matter how, no matter, instead of no matter. So it's snuck in, but still not as Southern as you might expect from a woman from Georgia. So she's very clearly using a standard American English accent. Let's listen to a white man from California, Conrad Anker. Too much risk is when you feel that you can't turn around, you can't control it anymore. But it, it's what I love to do. And on my days off, I go climbing. I just love that playing with gravity and the interaction with rock that's millions and billions of years old, that connection I have with my partners of trust and reliance, and I couldn't live without it. Now, when I was living in California, I was up north in Sacramento, so the, the California accent was not as strong up there. Sacramento had a lot of people moving to the region for the Air Force bases, so there were a lot of non-native Californians living there. But when you go down south, southern California, to San Diego and, and down there, Los Angeles and below, there's a very pronounced California accent. This gentleman is not really showing signs of that. He's very standard American English. It sneaks in though, you can hear it every now and again, but he's definitely speaking his version of standard American English. So these are interesting examples. Let's look at standard American English. Standard American English, often abbreviated SAE, and called Academic English, or AE, Mainstream American English, or MAE, and Standard Edited American English, SEAE, they like their abbreviations, is a variety of English that is privileged by those who historically hold power in the academy and in our society as a whole. So what they're talking about here sounds like it's a very um, academic accent or more correct perhaps more concerned with being correct uh, according to their perception of that because it is the language of people who have traditionally controlled american institutions of higher education sae is usually used on campus in our written papers speeches lectures and presentations so anybody who's got higher education in their background college degree etc which would be a lot of the folks we see on television all our newscasters and everybody, all our politicians, many of our actors are all graduates of higher education, higher learning. So they're going to be influenced by this SAE accent, Standard American English, and also, you know, General American English. And I think that these are the accents, the dialects that have become commonplace in our visual presentations, movies, film, recorded theater, etc. So just something to keep in mind, the shun monsters out there as well as all the other isms we have to deal with. <laughs> and it's something to think about as you're considering how you pronounce enunciate and speak 
your character's lines in whatever presentation you're in, whether it's a commercial, film, or theater. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys, and uh, I hope that your day goes fantastic, and thanks for watching. Keep doing the work, FFers. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel. And remember, if you want to join a bunch of your fellow actors who are serious and dedicated and will motivate you to keep doing the work, please visit ActorsFeedbackForum.com. Link in the description. See you next video.